Do you want to live a long and happy life? Well, in this video, I'm going to go through the main points from the book Ikigai, which will cover everything you need to know about happiness and longevity. So what is Ikigai? Well, Ikigai is the Japanese concept of finding fulfillment and purpose in life. It is often translated as the reason for being or a reason to wake up in the morning. Ikigai represents the intersection of four elements. What you love, so your passion, what you are good at, so your vocation, what the world needs, your mission, and what you can be paid for, so your profession. The idea is to find a balance where these four elements overlap, so that, that leads to, like I said, purpose and fulfillment and joy in your life. And Ikigai is a holistic approach to finding meaning and satisfaction, encouraging individuals to discover and pursue activities that align with their inner selves and contribute pos positively to the world. Ikigai is best described by this diagram. The book talks about the people from the island of Okinawa in Japan, where there are 24.55 people over the age of 100 for every 100,000 inhabitants. So let's start with a few facts from the Okinawas. Not only do they live much longer than the rest of the world's population, they also suffer from fewer chronic illnesses like cancer and heart disease, and inflammatory disorders are also less common. Many of these centurions enjoy enviable levels of vitality and health that the world, like the rest of the world, like wouldn't believe is possible because a lot of people that are old in any other parts of the world have no energy, sit about all day, don't, like they're not very strong and they can't keep living their lives, whereas these lot actually, like they live long, but they also can live good lives because of the health. Their blood tests, reveal fewer free radicals which are responsible for cellular aging so as a result this is a, as a result of drinking tea and eating their eating until their stomachs are only 80 percent full and a lot to do with the diet women experience more moderate symptoms during menopause and both men and women maintain higher levels of sexual hormones until much later in life so i'm sure there was someone that were i think i read in the book that was having a kid or had a kid at 70 and I'm sure there was actually people that could still have a kid at 90 like because they just well it's all about health the only reason things deteriorate is because of health like people think it's because of age but it's not it's because of health the rate of dementia is well below the global average as well in Okinawa which is obviously a growing thing and there's many reasons to do with that but not for this video Okinawa holds first place among the world's blue zones the there was a book by Dan Bootner called The Blue Zones. So anyway, the number one is Okinawa in Japan. Number two is Sardinia in Italy. Three is Loma Linda in California. Four is the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica. And five is Icaria, Greece. In Okinawa, women in particular live longer and have fewer diseases than anywhere else in the world. For many, helping others might be an ikigai strong enough to keep them alive. According to scientists who have studied the five blue zones, the key to longevity are diet, exercise, finding a purpose in life, so an ikigai, and forming strong social ties. So that is having a broad circle of friends and good family relations. Members of these communities manage their time well in order to reduce stress, consume little meat or processed foods and drink alcohol in moderation. They don't do strenuous exercise, but they do like move every day, taking walks and working in their vegetable gardens. People in the blue zones would rather walk than drive. Gardening, which involves daily low intensity movement, is a practice almost all of them have in common. So I touched on the only eat until their stomach is 80% full. So this is what they practice, a rule called the 80% rule, where they only eat until the stomach is 80% full. So they never eat until they're just full, really, and they can't eat anymore. They don't do that. So there's many reasons for this, but I'll simplify it by saying it avoids putting stress on the digestive system. And this is why you shouldn't eat, like, I think, six to eight hours before you sleep because you're meant to be sleeping and repairing your body whereas if you eat like an hour before you sleep 
your body's putting all its energy into di- the digestive system to, trying to digest the food so yeah like i say simplified it so you don't put stress on your digestive system because when it's your stomach's full it's got to work like 10 times harder so you've probably noticed that the majority of people nowadays just seem older than they actually are and research into the cause of premature aging has shown that stress has a lot to do with it because the body wears down much faster during periods of crisis the american institute of stress investigated this degenerative process and concluded that most health problems are caused by stress so there's many studies been on been done on this with like pregnant women that have stress compared to that don't and the babies then having deformities and men in higher stress jobs like being a doctor compared to not on like life expectancy and uh, getting diseases and illnesses and there's just a massive like big connection with stress and one of the reasons is actually because stress is the biggest factor of your immune system like getting damaged stress there's actually even more that like there's two of the same like chemicals released when you're stressed and when you've actually got a disease and so your healthy cells just start like attacking each other or dying or something the same as if you were trying to get rid of like pathogens if you're ill getting enough sleep is a big one and there's a lot to this as well but again simplified you need sleep so your body can function and repair itself and as i said if you're eating close to bed you're not going to get good enough sleep if you're on screens close to bed you're not going to get good enough sleep and you need to have like there's this thing i'm not got it there's this thing called the whoop watch which i want to buy i might and it shows you how much sleep you need and how much sleep you get like on a percentage and there's a guy called brian johnson which i admire because he's doing a lot of things i don't want to do in my life and he's fully like working out how to live optimally live longest and have all your organs work well and like sleep 100 percent, all these different things and anyway so he's been doing that he's been getting 100 percent sleep and yeah the whoop watch is how you can work that out and again there's loads of studies on that you can research it yourself if you want to but getting enough sleep is a major thing now on to finding your flow which is a part of when you find your passion it's something you can concentrate on for a like a long amount of time and like time flies and you get a lot done without distraction or needing a break you just work and work and work you look up and you're like oh six hours have gone by so that's how you want to be whereas when you're at work you probably many of you know you're looking at the clock all the time trying to work out how long you got left oh half the day's gone and oh, only two hours left I mean, it's not really a way to live your life is it because think how much time you are at work like as a percentage again in your life and not only that a lot of people i'm not going off on a tangent on this but a lot of people do they go to school go to work or uni whatever they retire and then they've only got like five years left and they've worked all them years to get five years the the ratio just don't work does it so yeah back to that you just need to like to find what they call your flow because that's something you're actually passionate about and it's something where you just forget about everything and you just become what you were doing. Like in the book, it used an example of when you're skiing and all you're doing is skiing, you're not thinking about anything else, you're not thinking about money, worries, whatever. You literally become what you were doing. Then there was a part in the book that said rituals over goals, like a little quote, quotation mark thing. So this is a great saying and there's a quote similar that goes, the man that enjoys walking will always walk for- further than the man that only thinks about the destination. So how you actually practically use that quote is, instead of writing your goals, write the actions and write the things that you want to get or want to do. So for example, instead of writing get a million followers, write upload six days a week. And so that's the action. And as a result of the action, you will get the result in a long enough time frame. I first heard this off of Alex Hormozzi, where I was listening to one of his podcasts, and he said, don't write goals, write actions. Now, a few words from Centurions. I'm not going to be able to pronounce their names, but I'll, I'll have a go. Misawa 
Okawa, 117 years old, said, Eat and sleep and you will live a long time. You have to learn to relax and also have a tremendous thirst for life. Maria Capovilla, 116 years old, she said, I've never eaten meat in my life. And she thought that could be a reason for it. She didn't have like a reason for why she's lived long. She just knows she's never eaten meat. Walter Brewing, 114. If you keep your mind and body busy, you'll be around a long time. He insisted that his longevity stemmed from, among other things, his habit of eating only two meals per day and working for as many years as he could. So when they say work, they don't mean the work of the Western world, what we all do that's not fulfilling, which isn't what not some of us enjoy, but not what we all enjoy. But working on his vegetable patch, being an artist, for example. So again, this is a bit of an extra thing, but if you think about it, your mind's always got to be like doing something. And so if you're on an art piece and you haven't finished it yet, every time you go to bed and every day, you're going to think, I need to finish this, I need to finish this. Your mind's going to be thinking to finish it. So then you're not going to, well, you could die, but you're not going to die on like a brain side of things because you still know you've got things to do. Whereas there's this well-known thing, fairly well-known in another study, that there's like a certain percentage of people, like a lot of people, two years after retiring, they end up dying because you've not got anything to keep your mind active and your body thinks if you just sit around all day, that's if you retire and sit around all day your body thinks you're dead and you're dying and so then that's what happens and lastly a thing they kind of found out is a peaceful life in the countryside seems pretty common among people who have watched a century pass now these are the secrets to long life a centurion says don't worry the best way to avoid anxiety is to go out in the street and say hello to people the things many of the centurions say is care for the vegetable gardens, go on walks, talk to people and meet friends often. Keep busy and relaxed. So busy but relaxed. So when you're busy, you don't have to be stressed. You can be busy while being relaxed. It's all a mindset. So everything's perception. I've talked about this before. Someone can be in traffic and be like, oh, I'm in traffic. It's so bad. Another person can be in traffic and think, oh, it's fine. I'm, I'm in traffic. I'm sat. The sun's on me. I'm relaxed and listen to music. So that's the two sides of perception. Wake up early and exercise. Eat a variety of fresh foods. That's a big one, a very big one. Eat a variety of fresh foods. Work. Don't stop working. Your mind needs something to keep it going. Then a quote. To live a long time, you need to do three things. Exercise to stay healthy. Eat well and spend time with people. One centurion said... I wake up at five every morning, leave the house and walk to the sea. Then I go to a friend's house and we have tea together. That's a secret to long life, getting together with people and going from place to place. Another said, the secret to long life is going to bed early, waking up early and going for a walk, living peacefully and enjoying the little things, getting along with your friends, spring, summer, fall, winter, enjoying each season happily. Be optimistic. Every day I say to myself, today will be full of health and energy. Live it to the fullest. I'm 98, but consider myself young. I still have so much to do. So this is another thing why a lot of the, I don't, well, in England at least, a lot of the World War One and Two, definitely two, um, like live into the 90s and up to 100, and it's because of their, like, the mental is so strong and nothing's harder than being in war times so that's like the big in, big one of the biggest reasons for living long is just mindset and knowing you'll live long and being strong from the studies done it was evident that 100 percent of the people they interviewed keep a vegetable garden and most of them also have fields of tea mangoes shikuasa and so on all belong to some form of neighborhood association where they feel cared for as though by family. They celebrate all the time, even little things, music, song and dance are essential parts of daily life. They have an important purpose in life, or several, so again, ikigai. They have an ikigai, but they don't take it too seriously. 
They will relax and enjoy all that they do. They are very proud of their traditions and local culture. They are passionate about everything they do, however insignificant it might seem. Locals have a strong sense of Yimauru, recognising the connection between people. They help each other with everything from work in the fields, harvesting sugarcane or planting rice, to building houses and municipal projects. The people that did the research said, Our friend Miyagi, who ate dinner with us on our last night in town, told us that he was building a new home with the help of all his friends and that we could stay there the next time we were in Ogimi, which is the little village they were in. They are always busy, but they occupy themselves with tasks that allow them to relax. We didn't see a single old grandpa sitting on a bench doing nothing. They're always coming and going to sing karaoke, visit the neighbours or play a game of gateball. Another big thing where I said, what I repeated about the diet is locals eat a wide variety of foods, especially vegetables. Variety seemed to be key. A study of Okinawa's centurions showed that they ate 206 different foods, including spices, on a regular basis. They ate an average of 18 different foods each day, a striking contrast to the nutritional poverty of our fast food culture. So, they say the whole five a day is just not good enough. I think I eat, let me count, nearly eight or nine, nine or ten different fruits, probably more, every day. Not including veg. So, literally just fruit. So, can't how many you I eat. I bet it's an apple or an orange. Like, what's that going to do for you? You need a variety and no one's getting it. And even if you are, people end up having GMO or non-organic. Which I don't have everything organic, but I have a fair amount. And as soon as it's GMO or not organic, you're just losing nutrients anyway. So, you're just eating food with no nutrition which is you might as well not eat it they eat at least five servings of fruit and vegetables every day so at least at least seven types of fruit and vegetables are consumed by okinawas on a daily basis the easiest way to check if there is enough variety on your table is to make sure you're eating a rainbow a table featuring red peppers, carrots, spinach, cauliflower and eggplant, for example, offer great colour and variety. Vegetables, potatoes, legumes and soy products such as tofu and are the staples of an Okinawa's diet. More than 30% of their daily calories comes from vegetables. Grains are the foundation of the diet. Japanese people eat white rice every day, sometimes adding noodles. Rice is the primary food in Okinawa as well. They rarely eat sugar, and if they do, it's cane sugar, which is sugar not nowadays is synthetic. Whenever it says sugar, it's synthetic. It's made in a lab. It's highly processed. It's toxic. It rips your cells apart when it's digested. It takes hours and hours to digest. It's shocking for you. Whereas cane sugar is actual sugar of a plant, which is what we're meant to eat so they drove through several sugarcane fields um, every morning on their way to Ogi, Ogimi and even drank a glass of cane juice at Nakijin Castle beside the stall selling the juice was a sign describing the anti-carcinogenic benefits of sugarcane in addition to these basic dietary principles Okinawans eat fish on average three times per week. Unlike in other parts of Japan, the most frequently consumed meat is pork, though locals eat it only once or twice per week. Along these lines, Makota Suzuki studies indicate the following. Okinawans consume, in general, one-third as much sugar as the rest of Japan's population, which means that sweets and chocolate are much less a part of their diet. They also eat practically half as much salt as the rest of Japan, 7 grams per day compared to an average of 12, which is an average, so a lot more people eat more than that. And even with that, Japan isn't even one of the most unhealthy countries in the world. If that was compared to America, 
I can just imagine how bad that would be. I bet they, I bet in America they eat more than the average per day in one meal. Not everyone, but prob- well, probably an average. Again, that's a guess, but a possibility. They consume fewer calories, an average of 1,785 per day, compared to 2,068 in the rest of Japan. In fact, low caloric intake is common among the five blue zones. And this is where there's a problem with the fitness industry because people think because people are healthy and go to the gym and have muscles, they're healthy, but they're not. Especially with this, and this is what Alex Eubank, which I watch a bit, was talking about how he wants to stay like lean and aesthetic and not like big and muscular because look at how much shite they eat and drink. They don't even care. They do anything to be big, like drinking protein, some of the protein shakes that are shocking for you, all this meat, cheese, dairy products. They're all shocking for you. And that's not even then going into all the extra things people then take when they're trying to get huge. So, and looking at that, 1,785, when I was looking at how I need to gain weight, because I wanted to gain weight and muscle, I would, my, like, number, what I need to eat per day was 3,300 calories. So that's nearly double the amount of the average person here. So there's the contrast. Look fit or be healthy and live long. An alternative to following the 80% rule so only eating to 8% on a daily basis is to fast for one or two days each week. So I've heard this as well by a guy that knows his stuff. He eats three days a week, I think Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and fasts all the others. Again, many studies to do with this. There's many things that say, oh no, no scientific evidence, but why would they say that? So that you don't do it, so you don't live long, so that you're not healthy, so that you get ill, so that you pay the people so yeah fasting is recommended so you do two days of fasting every week or three whatever i just said either one um and then eat normally on the other five days among its many benefits fasting helps cleanse the digestive system and allows it to rest so that's one of the main points among many other benefits 15 natural antioxidants found in the Okinawan diet. Antioxidants and molecules that slow the oxidation process in cells, neutralising the free radicals that cause damage and accelerate aging. The antioxidant power of green tea, for example, is well known. Because, and they drink a lot of green tea, I'll add. Because they are rich in antioxidants and are eaten nearly every day in the region, these 15 foods are considered keys to Okinawan's vitality. Tofu, <laughs> tifu, t- t- tofu, oh. miso, tuna, carrots, goya, which is bitter melon, kombu, bo- kombu, which is sea kelp, cabbage, nori, which is seaweed, and there's obviously a massive thing around sea moss, which is, well, at least near, near me, there's Irish sea moss, which has 90-something nutrients out of the 102 the body needs, or 103, don't know the exact numbers. Onion, soy sprouts, hachima, which is cucumber-like gourd, soybeans, sweet potato, peppers, sanpin char, which is jasmine tea, which I've, I've heard things of as well. And here's a list of foods recommended to combat aging. Among these foods readily available in the West are vegetables such as broccoli and chard for their high concentrations of water, minerals and fibre, fruits such as citrus, strawberries and apricots. They are an excellent source of vitamins and help eliminate toxins from the body. Berries such as blueberries and goji berries. I've heard good things about goji berries too. And they are rich in phytochemical antioxidants. Some herbs and spice, herbs, spices and seeds. Olive oil for its antioxidant effects that show in your skin, but uncooked because I can't remember the exact information about this, but I know that as soon as you cook olive oil over a certain temperature, and that certain temperature is what everyone cooks things to make sure they're not raw or undercooked, it then 
turns into another um, like chemical or structure turns into a different structure which is then highly toxic so and this is a thing that I've noticed with Brian Johnson he takes like shots of olive oil throughout the day I don't know how much and again never cooked always like cold pressed and all that red wine in moderation for its antioxidant and vasodilatory properties I've not researched red wine however I do know red wines obviously just from grapes and they're then fermented and I also know bits about how when things are left like they're either cut left fermented whatever they lose their nutrients and minerals so again I've not researched it but you could probably just eat grapes to be uh, for the same difference food that should be eliminated are refined sugar and grains processed baked goods and prepared food so just processed food along with cow's milk which is one not many people know but it's a lot to do with that as well so and it, and all its derivatives so cheese yogurt all that and that's because cow's milk's toxic and is meant for calves not humans not only that people say it's got all these minerals nutrients protein in it but you'd think say let's say it's got nine grams of protein in it what you can actually digest would be more like one or two grams so it's not as optimal as anything else so yeah our bodies can't digest it properly because it's not for humans to digest so following this diet will help you feel younger and slow the process of premature aging and on all of that on the whole food and nutrients i like to say go and research brian johnson or just subscribe to him on youtube and look at what he's been doing because he's doing a lot of good things on yeah working out how to make all your organs work properly or have everything at 100 percent. metabolism slows down 90 percent after just 30 minutes of sitting the enzymes that move the bad fat from your arteries to your muscles where it can get burned off slows down and after two hours good cholesterol drops 20 percent. just getting up for five minutes is going to get things going again so all these people now working from home or people that have office jobs, majority of jobs aren't active unless you're in trades anyway. But all the sitting about, well, even for me now, I've been sitting around for more than half an hour. It's not, yeah, it's not good for your metabolism and it just means you get fat build up in your arteries over time, which obviously isn't very good for you. Then there is nothing wrong with enjoying life's pleasures as long as they do not take control of your life as you enjoy them. The 10 rules of Ikigai. Stay active, don't retire. Those who give up on things they love doing and do well lose their purpose in life. That's why it's so important to keep doing things of value, making progress, bringing beauty and utility to others, helping out and shaping the world around you, even after your official professional activity has ended. Take it slow. Being in a hurry is inversely proportional to quality of life. As the old saying goes, walk slowly and you'll go far. When we leave urgency behind, life and time take on new meaning. Don't fill your stomach. Less is more when it comes to eating for long life too. According to the 80% rule, in order to stay healthy longer, we should eat a little less than our hunger demands instead of stuffing ourselves. Surround yourself with good friends. Friends are the best medicine. They are there for confiding worries over a good chat, sharing stories that brighten your day, getting advice, having fun. In other words, living. Get in shape for your next birthday. Water moves. It is at its best when it flows fresh and doesn't stagnate. The body you move through life in needs a bit of daily maintenance to keep it running for a long time plus exercise releases hormones that make us feel happy called endorphins smile a cheerful attitude is not only relaxing it also but also helps make friends 
It's good to recognise the things that aren't so great, but we should never forget what a privilege it is to be in the here and now, in a world so full of possibilities. Reconnect with nature. Though most people live in cities these days, human beings are made to be part of the natural world. We should return to it often and recharge our batteries. Give thanks to your ancestors, to nature, which provides you with the air you breathe and the food you eat, to your friends and family, to everything that brightens your days and makes you feel lucky to be alive. Spend a moment every day giving thanks and you'll watch your stockpile of happiness grow. Live in the moment. Stop regretting the past and fear in the future. Today is all you have. Make the most of it. Make it worth remembering. Follow your ikigai. There is a passion inside you, a unique talent that gives meaning to your days and drives you to share the best of yourself until the very end. If you don't know what your ikigai is yet, as Viktor Frankl says, your mission is to discover it. There are two things that can help you live a long and happy life, and that's both freedom and abundance. And, well, it's mainly mindset, but they're the two things that can definitely help. And so if you want to learn about like how to get them to, then I've got a video called The New Rich, Unlocking a Life of Freedom and Abundance. So you can watch that if you want to learn how the new rich live a free life and how they earn their money and all of that. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and hope you enjoy the next video if you click on that. See you in the next one.